Hello, my brothers and sisters in Kenya and around the world. This is Pastor Carlos, and I just wanted to uh, spend a little time with you online, uh, giving you a message and uh, giving you an update of uh, what's been going on with me <laughs> um, and uh, all the different changes that have been happening. And I know that I haven't been in touch uh, with a lot of people, and I apologize. But one of the things that has happened is that God has blessed me with a job. It's a full-time job, so therefore, I'm still adjusting to the hours that I work. Cause so some days I work during the morning, sometimes I work at night. So I can't constantly, while I'm being at work, uh, be connected to my um, telephone or any digital device because I have to tend to uh, the guests. I work at a hotel. Um, it's called the Hampton Inn. It's part of the Hilton uh, family and um, it's a high-end uh, hotel so you can imagine uh, the guests demand uh, the very best. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I pride myself in my job. I'm not prideful. I pride in myself in what I do uh, whether it be for work or for the kingdom. The word says that everything that we should do, we should do it like we are doing it for the Lord. So I've had some great opportunities um, at, at work, uh, praying for people, ministering to people, um, answering questions of people that have backslid uh, for one reason or another. In one particular case was um, a young lady who just didn't understand uh, what she was being taught and nobody would give her answers, so she backslid. Um, and I don't believe in consequences. I believe that God brings people together divinely for one reason or another. Sometimes you just plant one seed and God does the rest. Um, it is not our job to save everybody. It's, it's, we are called to minister, to encourage, to uplift, uh, to pray for each other, um, not carry each other's burdens, but bear each other's burdens, meaning caring for each other. Um, if you're going through something, I could feel it in the spirit. And one of the things that I want to say in regards to that is that I want to thank you all, especially Pastor John, um, who is definitely inclined to the Holy Spirit and is uh, always listens and he knows when I am going through trials and tribulations here at my end. Just to let you know a, a few things that have happened. Um, recently I have had uh, financial hardship. Um, I don't have a support system. I actually help my mom and my grandmother. So that's one of the reasons why I took this job because there is a need not only for them but also for myself. I could not, and I will never depend on the ministry to support me uh, financially. Uh, that to me is not the case. Um, if there was a church, if I had a church, a building, you know, a, a, a full congregation, that's a different story. But even then, um, I have my own business, which I ask that you pray for, uh, that it grows. Um, God has certainly put many people in my way recently, um, and it's amazing how um, it has taken off to a whole different direction. Um, <clears throat> most importantly, we all know that when you are doing something for the kingdom of God, attacks will come from the enemy. I don't want to give him any power at all, because all the glory belongs to God. His word says, and I repeat it a million times, that all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called upon his purpose. But that still doesn't stop us from being human, from having emotions and feelings, and sometimes even um, issues um, with our own mind. The battle, the biggest battle that we all face is in the mind. And um, that's where I am mostly attacked. Um, recently, you know, in this town, my past is no secret. Um, my testimony is a very strong, very profound testimony. Um, and I uh, don't share it often with a whole lot of people. Reason being, 
um, that I only use it like a filing cabinet. You know, when you need something, you pull out exactly what it is that you're going to need at that moment. But I don't tell the whole story because most people don't understand. One of the things that God <clears throat> rescued me besides um, alcoholism and being addicted to drugs was he freed me from homosexuality. Um, I've been serving the Lord now, I'm going on 14 years, and I can honestly tell you that I do not practice it. I will actually ask God that whenever the enemy sends someone that way towards me um, to warn me, and he does. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that that is the greatest sin. There is no sin is sin. The only unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. So um, we have to be careful. We have to be careful when we judge others because if God set us free, then if Jesus set us free, then we are free indeed. And if we start judging people according to their past, what you're really judging is the blood of Christ. Now, with that being said, um, divine ministry is my heart. I am always overjoyed uh, when I hear from you, when um, I see that you're interacting with each other. Um, one of the things that I shared with Pastor John is that you share um, share that, that button in your, your Facebook, not because I want the glory, but because there may be somebody out there who, that word, that seed, that you don't know that God's going to use to expand it into something greater um, by his word. I mean, his word never returns to him void. So how can we not share the good news of Jesus Christ? Um, I try on a daily basis to, to post things. It's not always easy because I have so many pages that I take care of. Um, most recently, I uh, chipped a tooth. <laughs> so um, I was upset about that, but I'm like, you know what? It's a tooth. I, you know, there's greater things to worry about. Um, not to worry about, but to, to take care of. Um, <clears throat> so I want to encourage you to continue to share the gospel on Facebook, uh, whether it's my post, Pastor John, each other's. Share it to other people's page. Share it to your own page so that your visitors can also see the post. Again, it's for the glory of God. Um, we are all used as vessels. Um, I know that most of you have seen things on, on social media that have touched you in a great way, and so therefore you share it, and then somebody else will respond, thank you for sharing, I needed this. It's the same concept here. Um, and one of the things that I'm praying for is that for unity, not only here for pastors in, in in my community, but also around the world, in Africa, among leaders, among the congregation, that there be no division at all whatsoever, that everyone be in the same spirit, singing praises and worship to God, uplift them high. If he's greater, then let him be greater. If he's good, then let him be good. If he's higher, then let him be higher. And praise his holy name, hallelujah. We praise you, O oh God, because of the things that you are doing in our lives. You know, God can do 10,000 miracles in one day in our lives. And sometimes we only notice three. And I had to ask God for forgiveness about that because sometimes a delay is actually you, God saving you from something else. Sometimes a no is because you're being protected by God. And then the yes comes along because the pathway has been cleared. Um, so we must be patient. Um, I'm being patient for a lot of reasons. Uh, <clears throat> there's a couple of circumstances that are affecting me right now. Um, and I am trusting fully in the Lord that he will deliver me from that, the snare of the enemy who is um, against me. And in this case, I'm talking of a person. It's another pastor. Um, and you know what? That's okay. Um, I know that I've erred, that I know that I have made errors, bad choices, um, mistakes, I'm human, and so are you, we are, and no one um, <clears throat> is expecting us to be perfect, uh, however, to be uh, 
to look within our hearts and do a self inventory of who we are, what we're doing. Are we thinking about what we're doing or are we just saying it to say it? You know, one of the things, <clears throat> excuse me, I used to teach the youth was uh, when when someone asks you, hi, how are you doing? Our automatic answer is, oh, I'm okay. When in reality, you really not. So imagine if you were really honest, would that person really stop to listen to why you are not okay? So that's why we say we're okay, because we know for a fact that that person is not gonna stop to listen. Because the moment we say, okay, they just keep on going. And that's the truth, that's the truth. Um, not everybody is gonna be a believer. Don't push your belief systems on anyone. Just simply preach the gospel, sow a seed. And sowing a seed doesn't necessarily mean money. It means a word that God has given you for someone. If God repeatedly keeps bringing someone to your mind, that means that he's asking you to intercede for that person. If God um, shows you something, <clears throat> it is not something for you to go around talking about. It is something for you to continue to pray about. Uh, and in due season, God will give you the okay to share that with whomever it is that he wants you to share it with. Um, there's a lot of false prophets out there right now. There's a lot of false teachers. There's a lot of false pastors. Um, I'm constantly being bombarded, asking uh, pe people asking me to support them financially. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if I only could, if I had it, I, you know I would. Pastor John knows I would. Um, but it's not my job to save the world. I am myself in need. And, you know, there's a scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But above that, it tells us to be content wherever we find ourselves. Um, I get teary-eyed because my heart is with you. I love you all. I haven't met you in person, and I'm sorry. <laughs> but I feel you, and I carry you in my spirit. I pray for all of you. And I ask God to bless you, to open doors for you, and to give to you all the desires of your heart according to his riches and glory. My biggest dream is to set foot in Kenya and be able to praise God that I made it there by his grace, by his mercy, by his love, to share whatever it is that he has prepared, whatever table he has prepared for you all. I am willing. I am willing to lead, but I lead from the back. I'm not the one in the front. This is not about me. Collectively, all of us make this ministry. And this ministry is a soul winning ministry. It's not a money ministry. We're not here to support. If we have, and we have someone in need, then the Bible tells us we should help those in need. But when you don't have, you don't have. However, you can pray for people's provision. And I love every single one of you. I don't, I haven't met you personally, but I feel you all in my spirit. And sometimes I feel guilty, I'll be honest with you, because here in the United States, we have an abundance of things. And sometimes we take it for granted. You don't, you, you well, from what I've seen, <clears throat> and have experienced. No matter what you're going through, you praise God with all of your might. You give praise and worship with all of your might. And you love the Lord. And here, a lot of people take that for granted. And the reason why I get emotional is because I wish that people could see what you all go through. All that you have to press through to get to where you're going, to, to get to the place of praise, to get to the place of worship, or even prayer, um, or the hindrance of things that you may need or want. Um, you know, I always say, if I wanted an apple, I could go to a store here and there's a thousand of them available for me to pick up. Some places don't have that luxury. 
And so my heart goes out, not just to Africa, but all the nations and all the people in need, especially in this season of this pandemic. Um, here, it is terrible. 80% of Florida, the state of Florida, the United States has COVID. God has covered me because I work with the public. I'm constantly sanitizing everything around me at work, but I have to be careful because I have an elderly grandmother who lives with me and um, this thing, you know, that should be bringing us together has divided us even more. And that's not what God wants, you know, if he isolated us, then we should have our the altar in our hearts to him in our homes singing praises and worship and reading the scripture, inviting brothers and sisters over for a glass of water or coffee and discussing the things of God and praying for the ministry, interceding for one another. You're doing the work of God. You're doing the work of God. And I praise God and I thank him for every single one of you because I love you and because I know that you do it all with your might, that you do it all with your heart for his glory and for his might. May the power and kingdom, his kingdom, power, praise, glory be forever for him in Jesus' name. The kingdom has keys. And every time that you use the word of God, you are holding a key. You're opening secret doors that no man can see. Open or shut but we have that authority. Use the word of God as your weapon, for it says it is written, and what is written cannot be disputed. It is the word of God, and like I said, it does not go back to him void. It will always accomplish what he will set it out to do. So I ask you to pray for each other, to continue to uh, support this ministry however you can, whenever you can. Help Pastor John and his wife, his children, take care of each other. And believe me, God will provide. God will reward your diligence. And I always say, be obedient to God and leave the consequences of your obedience to him. I love you all. And my prayer for you is this. Father God, I lift up Kenya into your presence and every other country, Lord, who needs your grace, who needs your love, who needs your saving, of the saver of souls, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to preach the gospel, that you have given us that ability, oh God. We come against every demonic in anything that hinders us from accomplishing what you have set us out to do. We praise your holy name, O oh God, because you're worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Father God, I lift every person in this ministry into your hands, O oh God, and I ask for your provision. I ask that you protect them. I ask, Lord God, this in Psalm 91 resides inside of them, Lord. Father, ask the same for me. Keep us safe, O oh God. Keep us safe. And guard us, hide, hide us from our enemies, O oh Lord. And when he does come in, let your Holy Spirit come in like a flood, Father God. Father, I thank you for them. I love them. And I know that you love them even further than I can, Father. And I ask you that you bless them. Bless them indeed and enlarge their territory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, God. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I love you.